there's like so many fairy tale retellings out right now that I just had to give you some of the best ones that I could find. Hi, I'm Madison and welcome to Imposia Book Club. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about some fairy tale myth retellings that you need to check out. Make sure you stick around until the end to hear about a brand new one that is coming out in just a couple months. So the first one is going to be Cinderella is Dead. This has a US cover and this gorgeous, gorgeous UK cover. Like I love them both. I'm actually not sure which one I prefer, but that's beyond the point. This follows 200 years after the events of the Cinderella story that we all know and love. And as a result of that, every year there is an annual ball held where girls of a specific age go to the ball and they are basically kind of like paraded around as a marriage mart. They have to get married to one of the eligible suitors. And if a girl is not married by the end of the annual ball, they just um disappear. No one knows what happens to them. So we're following Sophia and she just wants to marry her best friend, Erin. But the rules of the ball is that she has to get married to one of the boys that are there. So she ends up fleeing the ball and trying to hide from everything. And she ends up hiding out in Cinderella's mausoleum. And when she gets there, she ends up coming across Constance, who is the current descendant of Cinderella and actually Cinderella's last descendant. The two girls end up talking about the ball and all the societal expectations. And they end up coming up with a plan but they are deciding that they are going to take down the king and end the annual ball once and for all. This is such a fun, sapphic Cinderella retelling and you need to check it out if you have not. We then have Sea Witch by Sarah Henning and this is a Little Mermaid retelling where we're actually following kind of Ursula's origin story. When her best friend dies, Evie is isolated from her town and called a freak, a curse, and a witch. Evie is in mourning and trying to deal with some of these unknown powers brewing inside of her when one day a mysterious girl ends up washing up on the shore that her best friend died in. This girl ends up bearing a eerie resemblance to her dead best friend and so Evie instantly latches onto her and they become fast friends. As time goes on the two of them end up catching the eye of the crown princess and it seems like their life is going really well. That is until the mysterious girl reveals to Evie that unless a curse can be broken she is not going to be able to stay on land much longer and so Evie decides that she will do anything to keep her new friend alive even if it means sacrificing the crown prince and going into the waters that she so much fears. If you're at all interested in kind of Little Mermaid X Ursula vibes, you need to check this out. It is a much kind of darker reinvented version of the story and really kind of goes into the prices that you're willing to pay in order to keep hope alive. Then we have Malice, which is an adult book and is an Aurora Maleficent retelling. So Princess Aurora is the last heir to the Briar throne as each of her older sisters has ended up dying of the curse that is being placed upon their bloodline. If Aurora does not find a way to break the curse soon, she too will die and the Briar bloodline will forever be lost. In comes Alice. Alice is one of the fairies of this world, but she is a fairy unlike any other. She is a dark fairy who has magic that surrounds curses, poisons, and hexes. When Aurora hears of Alice, she believes that she can help her break the curse that has been placed upon her. But Alice is very reluctant to open up to this bright and beautiful princess. Now this is a sapphic romance, but the romance is kind of more of a subplot to everything else that is going on. It's a really interesting and unique retelling, but it does have a lot of adult themes. So do know that before going into it. Then we have Girls Made of Snow and Glass, and this is a Snow White retelling. So we're following two different timelines and two different point of views in this book. The first point of view is Mina, and Mina's father is a magician who one day secretly cut out Mina's heart and replaced it with a heart of glass. Ever since then, Mina has been unable to feel love and express any emotions of the sort. When she ends up moving to the White Spring Castle and laying eyes on the king, she knows that there is something that she can finally do. She is going to win the king's heart and become his queen in order to finally gain the love of not only a man, but also of an entire nation. The only caveat is that the king actually has a daughter who needs looking after. And then the other POV, we are following Lynette, who is the king's daughter, and this is taking place a couple years after after the first POV. And Lynette is a spitting image of the former queen. And this is because she was constructed by a magician out of snow to be an exact replica of her deceased mother. But Lynette has no wish to follow in her mother's footsteps. Instead, she actually wants to be more like her stepmother, 
Mina. So Lynette starts training and devising plans to be just like her stepmother and it all pays off when her father ends up making her the queen of the southern region. However, as a result of this, it ends up displacing her stepmother's power over the territories and so begins a rivalry between Mina and Lynette. It's a really, really interesting retelling and I would highly, highly recommend that you look into it. It's a really fun take on the Snow White story and you should check it out. And then the last book I have to talk to you about is the one that's coming out in just a couple months and that is Grimrose Girls. So at Grimrose Academy, a young girl has just died and everyone is ruling it as suicide. But her three best friends, Ella, Yuki, and Rory, know that there's something much darker at play. When a new girl ends up taking their dead friend's place in the dorms, events set in motion that reveal that each of the girls are cursed to follow their namesake endings unless they can break the cycle once and for all. So this is basically the idea of all the different grim stories coming together in a much darker light and each of these girls being part of different fairy tales and being cursed to meet their demise over and over again due to their bloodlines. And so I'm really, really excited for this. I think it's gonna be a really dark and gritty retelling. It also has a female-female romance in it and some sword-wielding heroines. So I'm really excited to see how this goes. So do keep your eye out for this. And those are the fairy tale myth retellings that I have for you today. And until next time, I'll see you on Impose Your Book Club. Bye.